All right, we're recording. No one can see your face, so introduce yourself. And uh, uh, my name is Seth, and I'm doing section two point five, problem number forty-three. It is for well, what value of a is f of x continuous at every at every x. So, for what value of a is f of x continuous at every x? Are so, you sure that a squared minus 2a shouldn't have an x? Oh, yeah, my bad. My bad. You should be an x in there. My bad. So, um, as the limit, as the left limit, uh, so as the limit. So, uh, sorry, can I just, yeah, no, I, you know, I mean, I'm sure. This is fine, but so this is continuous everywhere because it's linear and linear functions are polynomials, they're continuous. This is continuous everywhere because it's constant. Constant functions are continuous. But if you have a piecewise function like this, you can have a continuous piece and a second continuous piece, but at the joint of the piecewise defined function, we have a dis can have a discontinuity caused by this jump. So what Seth is doing here is looking at two where we change pieces and trying to decide if it's continuous there because it's definitely continuous everywhere else. Okay, so on. So when it, uh, and then approach, as women approaching X from the left, um, that would equal 12, or 12 would equal 12. And then the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x would equal f of 2, which then equals 2a squared minus 2a. So, in that sense, both these limits need to equal each other. So, it would be 2a squared minus 2a equals 12. And from there you would solve it. So you'd subtract 12 from both sides. 2a squared minus 2a minus 12 equals 0. And then you'd simplify the function. So divide by 2, you get a squared minus a minus 6 equals 0. And then I factored out, factored the polynomial out to a minus 3 times a plus 2 equals 0. So I set both the factors equal to 0. So it would be a minus 3 equals 0. And a plus 2 equals 0. Solve for a in both cases. So a minus 3 equals 0 would be a equals positive 3. And then a plus 2 equals 0, a would equal um, negative 2. So this function is continuous at a equals 3 and a equals negative 2. That 
looks good. If I can just sort of expand slightly on the argument being made here. To be continuous at two, we need three things. We need the limit as x approaches two to exist. We need f of two to exist. And we need the limit and f of two to be equal. So f of two exists. When x is greater than or equal to two, you're in this piece. And f of two is two a squared minus two a. So it's to check whether the limit exists that we're suddenly introducing one-sided limits. Because for the limit to exist, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to be equal to each other. So what happens as we approach to, well, different things happen from the left and from the right. And that was the rationale of first looking at the right-hand limit, then looking at the left-hand limit, these being equal to each other, ensures that the limit exists. And we haven't checked, but it is true that if A is three or negative two, then when we plug everything in here, we have a quality. So this is the standard trick if you've got a piecewise defined function and you want to know what happens at its joint, the standard trick is to use one-sided limits. So thank you for that.